Question number four says, we have an nth order linear ODE with constant coefficients. And uh, we can solve those by making a substitution y equals e to the mx and solving for values of m. So what we want to do is we want to solve this initial value problem uh, by making the substitution y equals e to the mx. Uh, this is an initial value because you're given initial values for a second order linear ODE. As long as you're given two initial values, you can, uh, you should be able to solve for any constants of integration that would come out. So let's see. I've got, uh, if, I, if I wanted to, I could write this equation as second derivative of y, and this is a function of x, plus 5 times the first derivative of y minus 6y is equal to 0. We want to make the substitution y equals e to the mx, y equals e to the mx into the equation that we're given. And to make that substitution I need y, e to the mx, I need y prime and I need y double prime. So here I need to find the derivatives of this exponential uh, equation. So my first derivative here, this is a, a function of x, and so m is acting like a constant. And to take the derivative, we're going to bring the m down, and then you multiply by the exponential. So the first derivative is m times e to the mx, and our second derivative, for my second derivative, I'm going to carry down another m, and it's going to give me m squared e to the mx. So now I can come back to my equation. Second derivative of y plus 5 times the first derivative of y minus 6y is equal to 0. And I can make my substitutions. My second derivative of y was m squared e to the mx. Then I get plus 5 times the first derivative of y is m e to the mx. Then I get minus 6 times y, that's e to the mx, is equal to 0. This gives me an algebraic equation to solve. And notice that I have this e to the mx in common. I can factor e to the mx out, and that will leave me with m squared plus 5m minus 6. Okay, so I get the equation e to the mx times m squared plus 5m minus 6 is equal to 0. And I could factor further by factoring this m squared plus 5m minus 6 into, let's see, I need factors of 6 that subtract to give me 5. That's going to be a positive 6. I'm going to have a negative 1. m squared plus 5m minus 6 factors into m plus 6 times m minus 1. I still have this e to the mx as a factor. And all of that's equal to 0. So I have a 0 factor property that says that if I have numbers multiplied together to give me 0, that any one of those numbers could be 0. And so using that 0 factor property, I'm going to get three equations. e to the mx equals 0, m plus 6 equals 0, or m minus 1 equals 0. Now if you remember uh, what an exponential function looks like, an exponential function I'm going to draw this on my xy plane. Looks something like this. See, they're always increasing or always decreasing. The important part is that this function never actually touches 
the x-axis. And so it's never equal to zero. This first equation, e to the mx equals zero, has no solution. And so I'm going to get solutions to this equation by looking at these linear equations. If m plus six is equal to zero, then I'm going to get m is equal to negative six. And if m minus one is equal to zero, then I'm going to get m is equal to one. Now, remember our solutions, if I come back here, this m stands for the coefficient of x that goes in my x exponent of this exponential function. So here I'm going to have two solutions. I'm going to have one solution, I'll call that y1, equals e to the negative 6x, and I'm going to have a, another solution, I'm going to call that y2, is equal to e to the x, e to the 1x, or just e to the x. Uh, my general solution can be found by multiplying each one of these solutions by a constant and then adding together. So my general solution is y equals some constant, I'm going to call it c1, times my first solution, e to the negative 6x, plus another constant, I'll call it c2, times my second solution, e to the x. That's my general solution to the equation. Now, here we're given an initial value problem. And because we're given an initial value problem, we're given these initial values. We'll be able to take those and substitute them into the equation so that we can get the values for C1 and C2 that make this equation true. Uh, my first initial value, y of 0, equals 0. I'm going to do that up here. y of 0 equals 0. This tells me that my value for x is 0. And so when I substitute 0 in for x, notice that my exponent here is going to become 0. I'm going to get e to the 0 power, which is 1. And that just leaves me with c1 times 1 or just C1. Lost my mouse. C1. And the same thing is going to happen to our second term. We're going to end up with e to the 0 times C2. So I, I end up with C1 plus C2 is equal to 0. For my second initial value that we're given, this is uh, dependent upon the the derivative of y. And so I need to find the derivative of y. I'll do that down here. To get the derivative, we just carry down those uh, coefficients of the exponent. In the first case, I'm going to carry down the negative 6. I get negative 6 c1 e to the negative 6x plus the coefficient here is a 1. So carrying down the 1 still leaves me with c2, e to the x. That's my y prime. And now knowing that y prime of 0 is equal to 7, let's see, I get y prime of 0 equals 7. Putting 0 in for my x's is going to cancel out those exponential parts. It leaves me with a negative 6 c1 plus c2. And this gives me a system of equations that I can solve. Uh, I'm going to solve these by uh, changing my ink color. I'm going to multiply this first equation through by a negative 1. So I get negative, negative, negative. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add these together. And that's going to give me 7 is equal to negative 7 c1. And the negative c2 and the positive c2 cancel. And if you divide by negative 7, you're going to get c1 is equal to negative 1. 
and then from that first equation I have that that C1 plus C2 is equal to 0 if C1 is negative 1 then C2 has to be 1 in order to get 0 C2 is equal to 1 and so my my particular solution which corresponds to the initial values that I'm given is going to be y is equal to c1 negative 1 negative e to the negative 6x plus c2 1 c2 1 e to the x e to the x and that's the solution that you should get